In this video, I'm going to show you how to develop Vadin applications using IntelliJ IDEA. So the first step, uh, if you haven't done so, is to install IntelliJ IDEA. You can do that by going to jetbrains.com and over there you will find a link to download IntelliJ IDEA. There are two editions of IntelliJ IDEA, a community edition which is free and an ultimate uh, edition that adds some extra features. For this video I'm going to use the community edition. So what you have to do is just uh, to download this file and run it. I'm not going to do it uh, in this video, it's pretty simple. But once you have installed uh, the software you can just run it as any other program in your computer and the first time you run the, uh, well, the, the software you will find this kind of wizard that allows you to configure how IntelliJ IDEA uh, works. I'm not going to do that in this video, so I'm going to skip and set all the defaults. And there are several options to create a new VADIN application with IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, the one that I find uh, like the easiest one is just by, uh, going to vadin.com and uh, slash uh, download and uh, copying this command over here, this maven command. So you need to have maven installed. And then I usually just move to some directory, paste this and change the name of the project that I'm creating. So I'm going to use tutorial for this one. And uh, I don't need this anymore. So I can go back to IntelliJ IDEA and import the project, which is also pretty simple. Just select the directory tutorial. Then, uh, well, you need to tell IntelliJ, IntelliJ IDEA yeah, that you are using Maven here. Then just accept all these defaults. And, well, also, the first time you are importing a project, you need to specify the JDK. So just go ahead and select the directory where you installed the Java development kit. And I think that's it. So now the uh, project is over here and you will find uh, two directories. This one, .idea, it's just where IDEA stores the configuration for the project. You have to, I would recommend that you just ignore this if you are using any kind of uh, version control system such as Git. And also you find the source directory where all your source code is. Um, the pom.xml file, which is a project object model, it's like uh, the definition of the Maven project. And a readme.md where you can document your project for other developers and yourself. So the most interesting part of this uh, is the Java code, actually. Uh, you will find that there is one class called myUI. And if you open this uh, file, you will see that, that this is just a, a Java class that defines the UI. Uh, let me just remove some uh, of this uh, to avoid distraction. So what you have is a class that extends UI. That's uh, from the Vadin um, API. So you need to override this method. You need to implement it. And also you will find a servlet class over here that extends uh, Vadin servlet, which is also provided by the, by the library. And well, particularly, you will find an annotation that somehow points to this UI. So that's how everything is connected. This servlet will just delegate to this. And it's inside this method where you can uh, start creating your Vadin application using plain Java. So for example, let's say we want to show some static text. How can you do that? Well, there is a class called label in the com.vadin.ui package that you can use for that. And here you can specify the text. So let's say, hello, Telly J idea. And now we can assign this to a new variable and the last step is uh, configuring the component that is going to be shown when you render this UI. You can do that by calling the set content method 
and passing the well the actual component which is a label in our case mm. so that's it that's a super simple Vadin application now we need to run it so as you can see we have a kind of a tip over here and we are going to use it we're going to uh, click this option maven projects which opens up this uh, view uh, with the tutorial example application that we just created and there are plugins over here so of course it's a web application so you need a web server and we have uh, the Yeti server already configured or the plugin for Maven and that's what this means and if, if you expand this you will find the option to actually run the project so you can go ahead and do that and just play uh, or uh, click this uh, play button over here but because you are going to do this several times maybe it makes sense to create a run configuration so that it appears over here you'll see in, in a second so right click this uh, select this option create and here we are creating a, a run and debug configuration that points to that will execute this this goal this maven goal so uh, I'm going to accept all the defaults and now we have it here so we can forget about this view and just click for example the debug button over here and this will start the jetty server and deploy the application as you can see uh, the application has uh, well the server has been started and uh, it's uh, listening to the port 8080 so we can go to localhost 8080 and there we go we have the uh, the text that we wanted to show so let's uh, quickly implement something more interesting so let's remove everything again and let's say we want to show a text field text field and uh, well, let me create the instance first and this will ask for a name so what's what's your name and then we want to use a button for example button and let's use send as the caption of this button and now what we want to do is to add these two components to this UI but if you remember the send content method only accepts one component so we need something else right here that's called a layout so in a layout you can add multiple components for example there is a vertical layout there are many others let's use this one layout equals new vertical layout and you can add components into this uh, layout so either you can use the add component method and uh, use one line of code to add each component or you can add you can use the add components method and add the text field and the button now we can use the set content method to say that the layout is going to be uh, the component shown in this UI which well contains the other two components um, so let's uh, stop the application and run it again let's refresh here and there you go we have the, the two components of course this uh, doesn't work there is no behavior in this application but before we add some behavior let's uh, improve how it looks uh, I want to add some uh, space some margin over here and also some space between the components and that's also very simple to do so we can do it for example here so for this layout I'm going to say set margin true that activates uh, some space over here or around the, lay the layout and set spacing also true that's the uh, space between the components so let's start the project again and now we have something that looks a little bit better 
Uh, finally, let's add some behavior. So we want to do something when we click this. Uh, how can we do that? Well, that's pretty simple as well. All you have to do is to add a click listener. So here you define uh, with a functional interface what's going to happen when you click the button. So I'm going to use a lambda expression actually here and show a notification. So Vadin has this class notification and there are some static methods. So let's just show um, hello. And now I want to show the name of the person that was introduced in this text field. So that's pretty simple also, text field that get value. Uh, stop the Jetty server and start the, ser the server again. And if I type my name here and click the send button, I have the notification.